This is AFTV VIP, the official web app with members only content, has no ads and a live in-game match center. The bias predictor, it has daily polls and the AFTV 11 selector. Just one click away. Hi and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with the January transfer move to Arsenal. Looking forward this weekend to the FA Cup, the FA Cup returns. And you know what? I was thinking about it this morning. I want to win it. I want to win it. We've been the most successful team um, in this competition over the last decade. It gave me so much joy last year. Trust me, in a, in a horrible year with COVID, lockdowns, no, not being able to go to games. The thing that gave me a lot of joy last year was, you know, when I was thinking about it, was the FA Cup final, watching it at the box park in Wembley. It was absolutely brilliant. The semi-final and the final. Fantastic, right? With other Arsenal fans as well. So I want to win this. And I hope that Arsenal go with a pretty um, strong team against Newcastle on Saturday. Really looking forward to that game. On Arsenal, news yesterday that the Arsenal hierarchy have taken out a loan. Yes, billionaire, or shall I say multi-billionaire, Stan Kroenke um, and uh, the hierarchy at Arsenal have taken out a bank loan of £120 million. They've applied to it for, you know, you've this loans that is available under the Bank of England's COVID corporate finance facility. Arsenal announcing yesterday that they've borrowed £120 million. It's not going to go to transfers <laughs> in case you're thinking to yourself oh, 120 million let's go in um when the uh this that slow down it's not gonna go to that um it's gonna help with the day-to-day -day running of the club of course you know arsenal along with many other clubs have been hit hard by the fact that there's no fans have been allowed into the stadium think about it no revenue from fans um reduced revenue on you know all merchandise and all the sort of hospitality stuff, the boxes and all things like that. They lose, they're losing millions of pounds on that sort of thing every week. So they've applied for this um, 120 million pounds loan and have got it. And they're going to be using that to help turn things over at the club. I wonder what Mesut Ozil's thinking about that. You know, what is Ozil thinking about that? Because remember when he spoke about the pay, you know, players have already taken a pay cut. Then they laid off staff. Now they're borrowing 120 million pounds. Mm. <laughs> but it does look like Urzu is on his way out anyway. He's, he's edging closer to the door. Um, Fenerbahce is where he looks like he will definitely be heading on a three and a half year deal. Um, you know, we've been speaking about this now and now for the last uh, few days. And um, it definitely looks like um, it will be something that uh, will be happening. And, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be the end of an era, you know, for Mesut Ozil. The, the, the amazing thing about this deal, I was reading um, today that Fenerbahce, as well as, you know, obviously they're still negotiating his wages, which, you know, it's not going to be 350 grand a week but then it's not going to be 50 grand a week either. It's going to be a lot of money. So they're still negotiating that. And apparently as part of the deal, um, they're looking to get a job for um, Mesut Ozil's missus on TV over there in Turkey. So <laughs> I'll tell you, Mesut Ozil, man, he pulls strings because even when you heard about the, um, the MLS deal with DC United, they were saying that, you know, he can sell his coffee brand in the stadium. They'll help him to push out his M10 brand worldwide and around the states in particular. Now Fenerbahce are saying, well, you know, you come and sign for us. We'll get your wife onto TV. We'll get... <laughs> well, the, the power of Mesut Ozil is unbelievable. But it does look like we'll be hearing exactly what's going to happen to him in the next um, coming days. You know, the the owner of Fenerbahce, they, um, they've said it. You know, it's going to be sorted out within the next couple of days. Mikel Arteta at his press conference more or less said it yesterday, you know, within the next couple. Of, they're, they're all sort of saying the same type of thing, but it's going to happen. Mesut Ozil is leaving Arsenal at last. And I don't say that in the, you know, good riddance or nothing like that. I say that in the fact that this is saga has just been going on now for a very long time. 
It's not been good for either party. It's made Arsenal look really bad. The China thing, the wage cut thing, the way he's been perceived to have been treated doesn't look good for Arsenal. And it's not been great for Mesut Ozil. He's 32. He wants to play football. And he can't play football at the moment because he's training with the first team with no chance of getting a start. So it will be the best for both parties. And we did a poll on it um, on the AFTV.mobi app. Uh, make sure you get on that. Um, and on the app, um, reading it here, 65% of you said that you're going to be very sad to see him go. 35% of you saying glad. Um, so the majority of their, you fans out there, very sad to see um, Mesut Ozil uh, leave. But I just think it's going to be good for him to go somewhere and start getting some game time. Um, but the official announcement has not been made yet. Following Balogun, what is going to happen with him? He's our hot, hot prospect at Arsenal. He's a brilliant player, 19 only. You've seen him when he's come on in the Europa League. He's been that spark. I mean, I'd love to see Balogun play tomorrow. I really would. I'd, I'd start Balogun in that game against Newcastle. If not start, at least he plays a significant part in that game because he's such an exciting prospect. Um, however, I think it could be quite telling if that game tomorrow he doesn't play. If he doesn't come on in that game tomorrow, if he doesn't start or come on at all, that starts to say to me that Fuller in Balogun is on his way out of Arsenal. And I think it's going to be really, really sad. Apparently, there's 15, up to 15 clubs interested in Balogun. Some of them want him on loan. Others have been interested in buying him. And we know Swansea this week are interested in him. Sheffield United have been one of those clubs interested. Loads of clubs interested in him. He's, you know, You don't get up to 15 clubs interested in a player if he's not a super hot prospect. Mikel Arteta was asked about Balogun yesterday at his um, press conference. And his quotes were this. He says, we're negotiating with an agent, with a player that wants to stay at the club, and we need to find an agreement. I'm telling you that we're doing everything we can to keep him here. And hopefully, um, from the other part, they are doing the same and are in the same interest, which is the player's interest, which is to stay at the football club and be successful with us. So you can see there that Arsenal want to keep Balogun. Now, it seems to be, I, I saw another quote where basically Arteta was saying, we want him to stay. He wants to stay, but we're not sure what the agent wants. The agent, obviously, is trying to get the best deal for his client. And if you've got 15, up to 15 clubs interested in a player, quite obviously, the agent is going to be holding out for the very best deal that he can get for his client. It would be a, a dereliction of duty on the part of the agent if if he didn't do that. That's the reality of the matter. Whether we think, you know, just get it signed and it's not as easy as that. That agent's got to do the best for his client, which is Balogun. Now, I'm looking at this and this is starting to look to me like another Gnabry situation. And I don't want this to end up as another Serge Gnabry, <coughs> excuse me, Serge Gnabry type situation. Remember with Gnabry, went on loan to West Brom, was very unsuccessful. You know, Pulis wouldn't even want to play him. <laughs> um, came back, got over his injury, um, started to look good, went on loan to Werder Bremen, was looking really good. Um, no, sorry, came back, was looking really good. Arsenal were like, come on, we want to, We know that you're a super talented player. We know you've got the talent. We want to sign you on a new contract, but we can't guarantee at the moment that you can start. Serge Gnabry then said, no, nah, you know what? I want to play football now. You know what I mean? All these loans and up and downs and never starting. And there's so many clubs interested in me. I want to play. So then he went to Werder Bremen decided to, he wasn't going to sign a new deal with Arsenal, went to Werder Bremen, then was absolutely brilliant for Werder Bremen and then got snapped up by um, Bayern Munich. 
and the rest is history. Now one of the best players in the world. Yeah, in the world. Look at his record. You know, Champions League winner, goal scorer. He's one of the um, Germany's best players. He was with us. Now I'm worried about this situation with Balogun. Is this going to be another Gnabry type situation where we've got a player who's super talented. Everybody recognises his talent. Arsenal want to keep him, but we've left it late. It's now in the last year of his contract and he might walk to somewhere else. He might end up at somewhere else and go on and do big things. And again, we would have missed out on a great player that came through our ranks and he ends up somewhere else smashing it. Arsenal got to pull out the stops to try and get this deal done. Now, you know, from what I'm hearing, Balogun wants to stay. So it's about Arsenal trying to sort out something with his agent. The agent might be pushing and saying, how much game time is he going to get? I think with Arsenal, even if they could sign him to a new deal and then maybe give him a loan somewhere and say to him, you know, go, you know, go away, cut your teeth somewhere, then come back. You know, Aubameyang's getting older. You can be the guy that's going to come back in and eventually succeed him. But I can't, Arsenal can't afford to lose this kid. It'd be another one. I mean, I don't know what you guys think. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments. But to me, I don't know if this one's been handled the best. We were told that players were not going to be allowed to go, you know, players that we want to keep are not going to be allowed to get into the last year of their contract. That's what we were told by Vinay. That's not happening, is it? The Balogun. It's a mess. And now, you know, all, all the energy, all the cards are with the agent. Because the agent, as I said, if I was the agent, and if you was the agent, you're going to turn around and say, well, yeah, hold on. I want more money, man. And I want guarantees. And I've got 15 clubs there. 15. One in him. And I ain't even got out and checked out others yet. So sort out a deal. Big deal. Or we're off. Or, you know, or we can just sit around till the summer and we go for nothing. And again, you've got a hot prospect that so many clubs are chasing and he can go in the summer for nothing. No, it's, 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 it's not, um, it's just not a good um, situation. And I just hope that Arsenal can sort it out. And of course, when Ozil goes, who are we going to bring in at number 10? I know we've got Smith Rowe. Smith Rowe's been doing brilliant. Smith Rowe can continue to play, but we still need a number 10. We still need a creative player. Julian Brandt, who's been heavily linked. It was interesting to see the comments coming from Michael Zork. Um, <coughs> excuse me, again, he's the uh, managing director of football at Borussia Dortmund. He's saying, his quote was, I'm telling you that we're doing um, everything we can to keep him. And hopefully you'll be part of... Uh, oh, sorry, hold on, wait a minute. That's, that's the wrong quote. <laughs> um, basically, Michael Zork was saying that, listen, he's had no offer yet from Arsenal. There's been no offer put on the table at the moment for Julian Brandt for Arsenal and not even a um, register of interest from Arsenal. So what are Arsenal... Uh, are, are they going for Brandt or not? because we're still going to need that creative player. There's been no talk of any move for Buendia. Um, there's been lots of talk that Buendia could force a move. There's been, on the other hand, Buendia's been talking, making sounds that he's happy to stay with Norwich. Norwich got a game against Coventry tomorrow. Will he play in that? It's an FA Cup. I, I guess even if he didn't play in that, that's not really a sign that, you know, he's uh, he's going to leave because, you know, he's, he could be rested for a game like that. But there's been no movement really on that. What is happening with him? Are we making a move for him or not? No talk of Isco, right? Anything happening with Isco? Are we, we, we going to try and make a move for Isco? Have we completely gone cold on that one? Is that not happening? No talk on um, that one whatsoever. And then there's uh, Julian Draxler. What about him? Going to try and make a move for Draxler? Is he what we need? Is it a loan deal from now till the end of the season? It's gone quiet. It's gone quiet on all of these players. And um, I still personally think we need a creative player. And I want to see Arsenal, and I would love to see Arsenal, go out and try and move for a creative player in this window. Um, 
But at the moment, it's quiet. I mean, I guess, listen, I know that Arsenal are trying to get players out. Socrates looks like he's going to be, um, you know, Fenerbahce and Genoa, the two clubs in for him. He could be on his way out. So I know it looks like they're shifting out a lot of the dead wood. But for me, I think for me, there's two positions that Arsenal definitely need to try and fill this January transfer window. The most of the signings are going to come in the summer when a lot of the deadwood is finally gone. Mustafi, he's still lingering around, right? But the two two positions that I think now we need to, whether it be loan or whatever, is a creative midfielder, definitely, and a goalkeeper. I mean, who starts in goal tomorrow? Is it Runison who starts in goal up against Andy Carroll, you know, at Newcastle, up against Callum Wilson, these physical Joe Lintons, people like that from Newcastle. Would Arsenal trust him after what we've seen of him in games to be up against those type of guys? I don't. We need a goalkeeper. We need an experienced backup goalkeeper, right? Um, and we need a creative midfielder. And um, let's hope that in this transfer window, as well as getting rid of the Deadwood, we can do that. And we need to keep Balogun. We need to keep Balogun. So anyway, listen, uh, let me know what you guys think. Leave your um, comments below. Don't forget AFTV picks um, going on this weekend. A chance to win a £1,000. The link is in the description. Get involved with that. And uh, we'll be back um, also tonight with an AFTV Extra. We will be taking that will be live with all your comments. But thanks for watching the show. And we will be back tomorrow. And as I said, once again, don't forget AFTV picks. This is AFTV VIP, the official web app. With members only content, has no ads and a live in-game match center. The bias predictor, it has daily polls and the AFTV 11 selector. Just one click away. <laughs>